I want to bring in now uh, Chris Lewis, who is a former OPP commissioner and CTV's public safety analyst. Uh, Chris, we are here once again talking about the story uh, of a fallen police officer in the line of duty responding to a call. I guess first off, your thoughts, uh, at least at, at this point, and knowing the dangers that officers are putting themselves in every single day. Well, thanks, Matt. And it's obviously very, very heartbreaking. I don't know the officer uh, involved, the, the deceased officer. I, the name is familiar. I was in charge of Eastern Ontario for a number of years and certainly got to know a lot of the officers. But I, could, I can feel for every single person involved in this, from the officers on scene, the civilian personnel, the comm centers, the command staff, and on and on. And of course, the families that are be, would be just devastated by what's occurred. So, you know, we've talked a lot over the last 10 months where there's been 10 officers murdered in Canada. That's not car crashes and things like that that are sad enough, but 10 lives intentionally taken of police officers in Canada. And that's a high. We've never had more than six murdered in a year in the last 50 years. And so what is going on? What is the cause behind this? Is it just an anomaly? Uh, is the new norm, like I pray it isn't, but boy, we've got a lot to learn over the coming uh, days and weeks and months in terms of how did this one happen and, and then compare it to all the rest and look at is, what, is there a trend and what's causing it. And, and I think we can't speculate too much, Chris, but in everything that you've heard from the over the course of the last year, you talk about those, and we just mentioned those 10 officers. Is it, uh, what, what does your gut tell you at, at this point for why we're seeing this dramatic increase in the rise of murdered officers in this country? I, I personally think it all goes back to mental health issues and, and uh, real high stress levels and people right across North America and around the world, I'm sure, following the lockdown, uh, you know, number of months of COVID and so much uncertainty. And I know that domestic disputes are up, uh, you know, road rage, uh, neighbor disputes, people just seem to be on edge. Uh, and certainly at a time when mental health issues are being discussed far and wide, there's not necessarily a lot of supports for folks that are hurting and need help. So how does that all play into this? I don't know, but I certainly think it's not just criminals getting caught and shooting at the police to try and make their escape. It's bigger than that. It, there's undoubtedly mental health issues involved. Yeah, it certainly does uh, seem like it is the case. And again, as we've talked about, and we'll continue to examine some of these cases, not necessarily with what's happened uh, in our region right now. Do you feel as well, too, because it hasn't been limited necessarily to rural locations. However, I think a number of them have been in more rural areas as opposed to uh, in city centers or otherwise. But there have been some, you know, we talked about downtown Toronto last year. Is that playing a part in location geography at all? I don't think so. I think it's a real mishmash. Uh, you know, we've seen everything. A Toronto officer killed in Mississauga. We've seen, you know, Edmonton and a, a young OPP officer outside of Brantford area. And so we've seen it all. Um, but once again, it, it speaks to bigger issues that aren't necessarily crime issues. Uh, where are the guns coming from is always an issue. This may well be a hunting rifle, like who knows, but most of the major city crime involves smuggled handguns. More rural crime often involves, but not always, uh, you know, so-called legal handguns, and, or sorry, rifles and shotguns. So much to learn about that aspect as well before we draw any conclusions, but, but frightening, absolutely frightening to hear it yet again and to be talking to you and anyone about it. It just uh, it breaks my heart. Yeah, we've had too many conversations like this lately. Before I let you go, uh, I, we were kind of talking more big picture, but now if we focus in on Bourgette right now, take us through this investigation. Clearly the scene is, is limited right now, but what are officers doing? What's going to happen here over the course of the next 24 hours? Uh, yeah, lots of things happening. And, and the investigation itself will involve everything from the forensic examination of the scene, the weapon, um, it, all the calls that came into police about it, uh, including the first call, any calls to follow, uh, the background of the individuals involved, um, and on and on, like a lot of investigative work. But the, the more difficult part for the police, for command staff and colleagues is dealing with the loss of an officer, dealing with the families, notifying families, uh, all the tragic days and uh, very uh, sad days to come with funeral, a uh, funeral and everything else, and of course praying, everyone praying for the for the well-being of the two officers that were also injured because we really don't know their status yet. So so much happening and, and all very challenging. 
And again, we're hoping to get an update at 1 o'clock from the OPP Commissioner Thomas Carica. Chris Lewis, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you, sir, for your insight.